In this video we're going to look at abundance and in particular estimating abundance using quadrants. Abundance is the total number of organisms in a population, so just how many things there are. How it changes over time gives us information about the ecosystem and the abundance, the number of things is affected by a few different things, the birth rate and death rate, so how many being born or dying, increasing, decreasing, as well as immigration and emigration. Immigration being extra numbers coming into an area and emigration numbers going out of an area. So all of these will affect the total numbers. The total numbers and counting every single organism in an environment can be very tricky if there is a lot of organisms in the environment or if they move around a lot, so highly mobile populations. Therefore, rather than measuring abundance, we generally estimate abundance. And we've got a couple of ways of estimating abundance. One of those is by using quadrants. And quadrants can are good for estimating static populations, so populations that aren't moving, that are staying in the one place. So for trees, weeds, uh, barnacles, anything that is fixed in one position and isn't going to walk out of your quadrant while you're trying to count it. A quadrant is just a square of known size. Often we use a one metre by one metre square because it makes it easy for calculations, but you can have other size squares. To use a quadrant, you just place it down randomly in the area that you want to know the population of something. And then you count the number of organisms that are inside that square. So you might put your one metre square down and count three daisies in a field. You then pick up your square, your quadrant, and move it somewhere else. Again, this is moved randomly, so it has to be random throughout the whole area that you're looking at, uh, not just a place that's easy to get to or not too far for you to walk. Once you've taken a whole heap of different samples, you then average how many organisms there are and work out how many that would be for a metre squared area. So if you're using a one metre by one metre square, it's easy because that's a square metre, you just have to count them. If you're using a smaller or bigger square, you're going to have to calculate that based on it. Uh, for example, a 50 centimetre by 50 centimetre square, or half metre by half metre, only covers 0.25 of a square metre. So you'd have to include that in your calculation to get a true number per metre squared. So in this case, we've counted something, we've done five quadrants, and we've found that there are 12 of the population per metre squared. Once we know how many there are per square metre, all we need to do is find out the total size of the area that we're looking at, so the total number in square metres. So in this example, I've done something that's 150 metres by 200 metres, so that in total gives us 45,000 square metres. Then we look at our previous then the, we look at the number that we found previously and multiply that by the total area. So we found that there was 12 per square metre and there was 45,000 square metres. So therefore we're estimating that this population has 540,000 organisms or individuals in the population in that area. So you can see that this from counting five squares in the area is much easier than counting 540,000 things and remembering which ones you've counted and which ones you haven't. To increase the accuracy, you need to have as many different quadrants as possible, so as many as you can throughout the area. 
And to be valid, the placement needs to be completely random. And I mentioned before that you can't just move to places that are easy to get to, places that have a track going through them, uh, places that you don't have to walk very far. You need to actually have it random so you get a good selection of quadrants. Because if they're all in the one place, they will be the, your results will be skewed and therefore not valid.